This lesson is about solving a literal equation. What a literal equation is, it's going to be an equation that has lots of letters, and we're going to solve for one letter in particular. When you look at this equation here, f is the letter that it has been solved for. I want to solve this for a instead. The suggestion is to circle the letter you're trying to solve for, just to keep that in your mind, that that's the letter you want to isolate. To do these, you have to think about what operation has been done, and then undo that. The opposite of multiplying m and a is to divide both sides by m. When you divide both sides by m, the m's cancel here. You get a, which is what you want, and over here, all you have is f over m. Similar example is solving this for l. Circle the l. Lw means L times W. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. Divide both sides by W. And be sure you do both sides because you have to maintain the balance of the equation. The W's cancel out. You're left with L. Over here, you have A over W. To continue, A plus B equals C means that A and B have been added together. We want to solve this for A. So circle the A. The operation that has been done is adding B. You want to do the opposite, which is subtract B. On the left side, the B's cancel out. We get A alone, which is what we want. On the right side, C and B are not like terms, so all I can do is just write them as the expression C minus B. But this is our answer. We have rewritten the equation so that A stands alone. We have solved the equation for A. Sometimes the equation involves subtracting. Now we want to solve for M. Circle the M. This says M minus C. To undo that subtracting of C, we want to add C to both sides to maintain the balance of the equation. Negative C and C cancel. We get M on the left side. On the right side, H and C are not like terms. So we are just going to write them together as h plus c. This is our literal equation solved for m. To solve this for k, circle k. Now this says k plus the quantity g times t. To get k alone, we have to think about this is k plus something. To undo that addition, we need to subtract the entire quantity gt from both sides. The negative gt and the positive gt on the right side cancel out, and we get k alone. On the right side, v and gt are not like terms. All we can do is write it as v minus gt. That is our equation solved for k. k stands alone. Similar, we now have a coefficient in front of this k that we want to solve for, but that doesn't change the process any. This is 3k plus gt. If you think about order of operations, if you knew values for k, g, and t, you'd have multiplied those, multiplied those, and the last thing you would have done would have been add those values together. When you solve these, you need to work backwards exactly in reverse order. Since addition was the last thing you did, it needs to be the first thing you undo. And that's the reason we're going to subtract both sides, subtract gt from both sides. The GTs cancel out over here. On the right side, we have 3K. Over here, V minus GT. They're not like terms. All we can do is write them together. And then divide by 3 on both sides. I can divide by 3 this way and just do one big line and put 3. But sometimes it's going to be better if we divide each individual term by 3 because you'll see a little bit later there is some reducing that we're going to be able to do. In this example, we have a coefficient in front of k, which is what we want to solve for. But that coefficient is not a number. But this is very similar to the last one we just did. We still need to think about order of operations, realizing that that plus is the last thing you would do. So this is ak plus the quantity gt. You need to undo that addition of gt by subtracting gt from both sides. On the right side, the gt's cancel out. We still have a times k. Circle the k, that's what we're solving for. 
this side, the V and the GT are not like terms. All I can do is write them as the expression V minus GT. At this point, AK means A times K. Undo that by dividing by A. I could just draw one big old line and put the A underneath it, and that's acceptable at times. However, sometimes you do want to think of it separately like this. You'll see in a little bit why we would want to think about it separately. So either one of those is appropriate answers for solving this equation for K. Sometimes you have fractions to deal with, and our general feeling about fractions is get rid of them. And the way to get rid of them is to multiply both sides by the denominator. When I multiply on the right side by 2, the 2 in the top and the bottom cancel, just giving me BH. The left side is now 2 times A. We're solving for H. To undo B times H, we just divide both sides by B. On the right side, those Bs cancel. I get the H alone, which is what I'm trying to get. And the left side is 2A over B. This is my equation solved for H. Another one with a fraction. We're going to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is 2. On the right side, those 2's cancel, which is great because we don't want to deal with the fraction. So it stays A minus D. Left side, 2 times Q. We're trying to get D alone. It means we need to get rid of this A right here. That's a positive A. The negative goes with the D. It has nothing to do with the A. To undo this A, that is subtracting A from both sides. So we have negative D equals 2Q minus A. And the easiest way to deal with this negative sign here is just get rid of it. We don't want to know what negative D is. We want to know what positive D is. So I'm going to change it to a positive D. But if I make a sign change on the right side, I must make appropriate changes over here. The other way to deal with this, this was 2Q minus A equals negative D. You could think about there being a negative 1 here, and then divide both sides by negative 1. And if you divide like this, 2Q divided by negative 1 gives me negative 2Q. Negative A divided by negative 1 is positive D. So whatever way you want to think about it, you've just got to get that change to be a positive. Sometimes there are parentheses in these problems, and the way we deal with these parentheses depends on what letter we're trying to solve for. We are solving for X, which is inside the parentheses, which means the only way we can deal with this is to do the distributive property. So HX plus HY. Now hopefully you see that that looks a whole lot like a problem we just did a couple minutes ago. So we're going to solve it in the same way. We're trying to get x alone. That's hx plus the quantity hy. We need to undo that addition of hy by subtracting hy from both sides. The hy is cancel on the right side. The left says hx. The left side is not like terms, therefore all we can do is write them together as the expression 2a minus hy. On the right side, x is not alone yet, that's h times x. Undo that multiplication by dividing both sides by h. Now instead of doing it with the one big line, this is a time where separating it out is a good idea. That gives me 2a over h minus hy over h. And the reason that's beneficial is I have an H in the top and an H in the bottom. I can cancel those out just getting Y. And the front part of this just stays 2A over H. So our answer is 2A over H minus Y equals X. We have solved that equation for X. X stands alone. Same equation, this time we want to solve for H. H is located outside of the parentheses. There's no reason to distribute. Think about this as H times the quantity. So to undo multiplying, you want to divide by the quantity X plus Y on both sides. On the right side, X plus Y divided by X plus Y just cancels out. And we have H alone, which is what we want. On the left side, there's nothing I can do with this, so I'm left with the expression 2a over x plus y. And that is the equation solved for h.